Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So when research tells us that our grandparents' diets can actually affect our health decades later, it can be hard to shake the feeling that genetics does spell out the trajectory of our well-being. But how much of our health is actually determined by our genes? And what effect does our lifestyle have for better or for worse? Can we really overcome the genetics cards we've been dealt and extend our lives by eating well and exercising often, as new research is now intimating? And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I use to put this presentation together. A new study of more than 350,000 people found that lifestyle choices could offset the genetic risk of dying young by as much as 62%. The researchers wrote in their paper that, to our knowledge, our study is the first to investigate the joint association of genetic risk and lifestyle factors with human lifespan. Previous epidemiological studies have looked at one or the other, but with data from three large long-term population studies investigating the links between genetics, environment, and disease, this new study could compare the effects of genetic risk and lifestyle factors on longevity simultaneously. The team of researchers from several universities in China and from the University of Edinburgh in the UK analysed data on more than 350,000 adults of European descent. The cohort was recruited from the UK Biobank study between the years of 2006 and 2010 and were followed for a median of almost 13 years. The participants were asked about their diet, physical activity, smoking, alcohol intake, body shape and sleep duration. They were then grouped into three tiers based on these responses. The researchers also split the participants into three categories based on known genetic risk factors called polygenic risk scores. These were drawn from US studies and they affect lifespan. Similar to previous family studies, the researchers found that genetics can alone raise the risk of early death by 21%. An unhealthy lifestyle featuring poor sleep, little exercise, processed food, smoking cigarettes, and excessive alcohol consumption was also linked to a 78% greater risk of dying early. And this was regardless of someone's genetic predisposition. People with an unhealthy lifestyle and a genetic predisposition to a shorter lifespan were twice as likely to die from non-accidental and non-pandemic related conditions during the study period. This was when compared to those with a lower genetic risk and more favorable lifestyle habits, but opting for a healthier lifestyle, mainly by not smoking, exercising regularly, eating well, and getting enough sleep, did offset the genetic risk of a shorter life by 62%. The researchers concluded that this study elucidates the pivotal role of a healthy lifestyle in mitigating the impact of genetic factors on lifespan reduction. That said, we need to remember that this was an observational study and so no firm conclusions can be drawn about cause and effect. Also, most of the participants were of white European ancestry, so the findings can't be generalised to other populations either. What's more, the participants were all surveyed about their lifestyle at one point in time only, that being when they joined the study. And the genetic variants that were studied captured only a small fraction of the genetic risk associated with a shorter lifespan, so there could be much more DNA in play that wasn't looked at. Another big question this study touched on only briefly was at what age could people make a positive change to their lifestyle? The analysis found that people with a high genetic risk of a shorter life could add roughly another five years to their life expectancy at the age of 40 if they'd implemented healthy lifestyle changes. And the research also shows the importance of maintaining these changes. The researchers added that, given that lifestyle habits are usually developed before middle age, taking effective public health interventions is crucial for those at high genetic risk to extend their lifespan before the formation of a fixed lifestyle. And I think there's enough evidence from many other studies that even though they are epidemiological, that eating processed foods, having poor sleep habits, not exercising enough, smoking cigarettes, and not consuming alcohol in moderation will have an effect on both your health span and your lifespan. 
As you may know, as part of my longevity experiment, I have an unofficial control group of people who are around the same age as me. These are people I've known since I started my longevity experiment five years ago in the Middle East. Also people I was at school with and those that I served with when I was in the army. Many of these people still eat a lot of processed foods, smoke cigarettes, stay up late drinking alcohol regularly, and as a result, they can't be getting good sleep. So this control group are now either in their late 50s or like me are now actually in their 60s. Some have already succumbed to the diseases of aging and unfortunately a number of my friends have already passed away from said diseases. The main two being heart disease and diabetes. What I did find interesting in this study was that even if you did have a genetic predisposition to an early death, by adopting a healthy lifestyle, you could offset that risk by up to 62%. 